there, welcome to Paint and Zoo. My name's Matt and I've brought you today to our Croc Swamps exhibit to have a talk about life cycles for this school from the zoo. Now, it might surprise you whether you're learning about life cycles at school or at home just for fun, that here at the zoo, life cycles are really important to us. We're a conservation organisation and we want to see a world full of wildlife and wild places and that means we need to know how to breed the animals and plants that we care for. Now the strange thing is that here at the zoo we divide our keepers up in the same way that we're going to be talking about life cycles today. So we have mammal keepers, bird keepers and keepers who look after our amphibians and our invertebrates. Now the first thing I'd like you to do is to turn to the person next to you and to come up with some key words to describe a baby animal. So if I said to you, baby animal, what words would you use to describe it? You've got 15 seconds. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Now, I am hoping that you've come up with some good keywords, some good descriptive words to describe a baby animal. Okay, a lot of people would use words like small, and actually helpless is an important word as well, because a lot of babies are in fact small and helpless. It's part of being a baby, being a young animal, is that you need to grow, and you need to learn how to use your body to gradually become big enough, strong enough, and skilled enough to be a grown-up. Okay, and that's, so that's the same for a lot of animals, small, and helpless would describe a lot of baby animals. I'm also thinking that some of you would have used words like cute, but if you think of all the baby animals being cute, what about this picture? Okay, but let's show you a cute animal as well. So we've got these animals here at the zoo too. Okay, and you're right that lots of baby animals are cute, but not all of them. Right now, the first animal that we're going to look at to try and look at its life cycle is the mammal. But the first thing to explain, probably, is what is a life cycle? Well, a life cycle is the series of stages that an animal or a plant goes through during its life. So from the beginning of its life right through to its death is the stages that it goes through as it grows and develops. Now, the first life cycle we want to look at is the one for mammals. Okay, so mammals are animals like us that are furry and give their babies milk and the babies normally grow in the mother's tummy. So I have chosen Neville, who's our baby Geldy's monkey. So Geldy's monkeys come from South America and you'd normally find them in the Amazon roaming through the undergrowth, through the bamboo, and they like to eat lots of different things, things like insects and maybe a bit of fruit, but they also like to eat a weird amount of fungi as well. So they'll eat mushrooms and fungi that are growing on trees. Now, when they're moving through the forest, they move in small groups. And if we're trying to breed them here at the zoo, then we need a male and female, and we need them to get on. And if the male and female get on as a couple, if they bond and they mate, then a few months later, six months later, uh, we can expect to see a baby like Neville. So the mum is pregnant for six months. Okay, and then when the baby is born, the baby will ride on the mum's back for the first two or three weeks of its life. So Neville spent the first couple of weeks on his mum's back because then he's going to his mum for milk so she can feed him a lot. And then as he gets a little bit older, dad will start to look after Neville on his back and he'll then go back to his mum when he needs some milk. So he'll hop around. Now it will take Neville a good few months to start eating real food, so things like insects and fungi, and it will take him a few years to get big enough and strong enough to be an adult, to actually function as an adult monkey. Now I'm sure you realise how much alike we are with monkeys and apes, because we're a primate and the primates often are just like us, they'll just have one or two offspring at a time and those offspring, those babies, will take a long time to grow up. Now, if we're talking about Neville, that means that he could be learning to be a grown-up grown up for a few years, but our orangutans take even longer to grow up. Their childhood lasts for seven or eight years. So we have a, a young orangutan called Natalia, and she's seven, but she still spends a lot of time with her mum as her mum teaches her the important things about living in the forest. Right, now for the next group of animals, for the next life cycle we're going to look at, I've chosen a very big clue. So, can you guess who would produce an egg like this? So, can you turn to the kid next to you? You've got 15 seconds to guess which animal lays an egg like this. Ready, steady, go.
Now the answer is a bit surprising, it's emu. So one of our emus here at the zoo laid an egg like this. It's smaller than an ostrich egg, but I think you'll agree, it's still a very, very big egg. Okay, so rather big and very hard. Right now, as I'm sure you know, birds lay eggs, but I've got a question for you. It's another discussion point. So I want you to turn to the kid next to you and discuss, have you ever seen a baby bird either in real life or on TV? What did it look like? So you've got 15 seconds, turn to the kid next to you. Have you seen a baby bird? Can you remember, what did it look like? Ready, steady, go. Now I'm hoping you've had the chance to see a baby bird, either in real life or on TV. But what you may well have noticed is that they don't look quite like the adults. If you need to fit a bird into an egg, then it's got to be much smaller than the adult. But also some of the things that tell us what sort of bird we're looking at can't fit inside an egg. So if we are looking at something like a flamingo, okay, which is the example I've chosen for this life cycle, then a baby flamingo doesn't look like a grown up flamingo. The long legs and the curved beak that we are so used to with a flamingo can't fit inside the egg. Okay, and the baby, when it comes out, is grey. Well, what's going on there? And the simple answer is that when birds produce an egg, which is an amazing little package for a baby to grow in, then the baby that grows inside can't get as developed as a grown-up when it's inside the egg. It needs to carry on growing once it comes out of the egg. Okay, so if we're talking about the life cycle of a bird, such as a flamingo, the male and female will mate, the female will lay an egg, and that egg will be incubated, and then a few weeks later, it will hatch out into a baby bird, very small, slightly awkward, and the mum and dad will normally care for that offspring as it grows, and it will take it maybe a year, maybe longer for some birds, for that bird to get big enough and strong enough to uh, lay eggs itself or to breed itself. Okay, so that's the life cycle of a bird. Now we've looked at the life cycle of a mammal and the life cycle of a bird, but for the next life cycle we're going to look at something completely different, and that's an insect. Okay, we're going to look at a beetle. Now, can you please tell me, have you ever seen a baby beetle? What did it look like? Turn to the kid next to you, okay, and I want to give you 15 seconds to try and describe what a baby beetle looks like. Ready? Three, two, one, off you go. Now if we're describing baby animals, then normally we'll think about the baby animal being like a grown-up, just smaller. But with beetles, they look entirely different. A baby beetle is a grub or a larva, so it looks very different from a grown-up beetle. And we've chosen uh, sun beetles, which we call pachnodas, okay, and uh, that's what we've got living here at the zoo. They're very cool when they're babies, they look just like this. So a baby beetle is a little grub that will often live down in the ground, munch its way, that will change into a pupa and change into an adult beetle. And as an adult, they're really beautiful. They've got bright colors. And just like with a butterfly, the adult beetle doesn't live very long, just a few months. Now, cool things to look out for if you're looking at beetles, if they've got very fluffy antennae, then it may well be the male, okay? Because they use those to pick up on scents around them. Now, the final life cycle we're gonna look at is for an amphibian. So we have chosen our poison frogs here at the zoo because they're one of our favorites. They're really brightly colored, they're very active, they're found often in rainforests. So the ones we've chosen today are from South America and you would normally find these living in the rainforest, but they're a little bit different from the frogs that you will learn about living in the UK. So if you're learning about common frogs living in the pond uh, at school, then our frogs here at the zoo are a little bit different. They still lay eggs like frog spawn, but instead of laying them in the water, they'll actually lay them down in the leaf litter at the bottom of the rainforest. And then the male will sit and look after those eggs. There are stories of them actually squirting water on the eggs to keep them damp. And when the tadpoles hatch out, the male will carry, so the dad will carry one tadpole at a time on his back up to a puddle in the forest. It may well be right at the top of the trees or it might be another puddle that he's found and it may well be a puddle in a plant. So just a small little pool of water in a bromeliad and he will then take the tadpoles to there to look after them. Okay, and when they're in that puddle, they'll still use their gills to breathe just like the frog tadpoles you learn about and they will change from a tadpole, gradually growing legs to become a froglet, losing its tail to become an adult 
frog and the colours develop over time. Now here at the zoo, knowing a little bit about the amphibian life cycle helps our keepers to look after those poison frogs and to encourage them to breed. So if we're looking after certain frog species, the keepers know that they can be helped, encouraged to breed by trying to trick them to think it's the rainy season. So if the keepers make it rain in the tank more often by turning on the sprayers, then these frogs will start to think it's breeding season and then the keepers have also got another little trick which is that they put a little glass pod on the side of the tank that sticks there with a magnet in the hope that the males will put the tadpoles into that little glass pod. And it's very easy then for the keepers to take away the tadpole and to look after it separately so they can actually help the males to look after the tadpoles. So scientific knowledge about the animals that they look after helps our keepers to breed them and in some cases that's actually helped zookeepers to save a species from extinction. So a good example would be something like our Socorro doves. So with our Socorro doves, the expertise that the keepers have built up over the years helped them to breed the Socorro doves and there are no Socorro doves left out in the wild now. The only ones in the world are found in captivity and it's because of the breeding efforts of keepers that that species still exists. Okay, I've got a final little guessing game for you. Okay, so can you guess which animal here at the zoo would lay an egg like this? You've got 15 seconds, turn to the kid next to you. Three, two, one, off we go. Now I've chosen this egg here because this is one of the life cycles we haven't talked about today. There are lots of different animals with different life cycles. This is a crocodile egg and we look after some amazing crocodiles here at Paynton Zoo. Now for everything we've talked about today, for every rule, there's an exception. And there's an animal that really throws the spanner in the works, okay, which is the echidna. You remember I talked about mammals and how they will have live babies and they will have the babies in their mother's tummy and they'll feed them milk. Well, we look after Bruce the echidna here at Paynton Zoo and female echidnas lay eggs. So they're a mammal, but they're a special mammal that lays eggs. That little egg will hatch out into a tiny baby and that baby then crawls into a little fold of skin on the mother's tummy where she looks after it. Okay, so for every rule, there's an exception and echidnas are amazing and interesting. Now I was trying to think up a final task that I could give you to help you to learn a little bit more about life cycles and I've chosen one of my favourites, okay, which is I would like you to write a short story about humans if they had a different life cycle. So choose one of the life cycles today that you have learnt about, okay, and then imagine if humans had that life cycle. So what if humans had a life cycle like an amphibian? What if your mum laid eggs in the bath and she said to you, here, go careful, make sure you keep the eggs wet, darling, or they won't hatch. Okay, so I want you to imagine what it would be like if on the first day of the holidays, your mum said to you, keep the eggs wet as you go out, otherwise your baby sister will never hatch out of her egg. What would it be like if humans had a life cycle like an amphibian, or like a beetle, okay, or even like a bird? So try and come up with a short story uh, imagining a different world. Now, we hope you've enjoyed this School from the Zoo, learning about life cycles. If you like the video then please share, like and subscribe and if you've got any subjects that you think would make a great school from the zoo then please let us know in the comments below. Thank you very much for listening and come and see us soon here at Paint and Zoo. Cheers!